What's up people and welcome to my video series in anomaly detection and in this part we're going to look more into detail of the sampling uh, function and um, it's going to be based on the algorithm called uh, reservoir sampling you can have a look at this um, Wikipedia article here it's actually a pretty 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 good article it's um, showing the simple algorithm here that we're going to use and uh, then there is like an optimal algorithm that you can dive into and then all kind of all cool stuff in here. So you can definitely dive into this thing if you want to do a deep dive. But uh, we're going to be looking at this simple algorithm or the, like the naive implementation of this thing. And let's go ahead and dive into the code. So what I'm doing here is I'm running the, um, the CSV sampler here for... Uh, uh, from the debugger, so I've set it up to, to be able to do it row by row because it's easier to show what's going on. So I'm just going to go ahead here and, and just run it. So the first thing it's going to do is going to grab all the data from the CSV file here. And this data set is checked into uh, the repository, so you should be able to run this. And uh, I have this helper function here. That's just some something that I did to... Um, to um, you know, load and store data. So it's gonna uh, start by loading in all the raw data here. And if we look at how this data looks, it's um, it's simply just a text string with all the, the the data from the from the CSV file. And then what's gonna do? It's going to parse this data here and uh, split it on a new line. And uh, so you get a you know a map with with every row. So this is one row, for example. And then it's going to ignore the first uh, the first row. Like if it's falsely value with a row, or if the first index of that row is equal to the mean radius, basically meaning that you hit the header, then it's going to return null. And then it's going to split it again, and then format the model here with the parsing of the parsing to floats so with the trim and and all that good stuff, parsing to int here for the diagnosis. And filtering out all the false values, so uh, basically to deal with this thing here where I return null. So if we run this thing here, um, we let's put a breakpoint on the next row here. You can see that now we have the data here, and it's parsed. Um, it's parsed with all the with the variables here from the data set. And if we look in, into this data, we're going to see also that we have this thing called the diagnosis here. And this is the, this is actually kind of nice because it's the label of our data set, basically meaning that whether they got the diagnosis or not. So we're going to be using this as our uh, label to measure the accuracy of our algorithm. So they can be either one or zero here, meaning that they got a diagnosis or not. And the other values can have other uh, uh, the other attributes can have other values in them. So that's how the data looks. We have 569 items in this array. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to call this function here, uh, calculate max. And this is uh, kind of a not particularly optimal way of doing it because we were, we've already passed the data once. We could have done it in here, but for clean code wise, I thought it was simpler to do it like this because it's, it's explicitly showing the step where I, I do the math max on, on, the, on all the variables here to get the max value from them. And uh, basically, that's all it does. And and that's going to put the data here in the config. I have a config here. And the boundary here is going to store the max values. And these numbers here are the heuristical numbers from the number of trees and the subsampling size. Those are like t taken from the paper by itself uh, from good values that they have found in, in, um, in the article. So let's go ahead and, and run this row as well. And here, now here comes the interesting part of this algorithm where we actually create the samples. And um, here is just creating some com some initialization of this data set here. But, but then it's going to go over the number of trees that we want to create and calling the sample function and then putting that in config and then dumping that data to the samples folder. So if you look at that, we're going to have this samples underscore B file in here with the dump of all the samples that we that we sampled. And the, uh, the implementation of reservoir sampling is in this sample function here of the data. So let's uh, have a look at that. Um, all right. 
right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to this thing. We have all the data here still for the data that we parsed. And it's gonna iterate over all the data. And if, now if the data is, um, if the data, or if the sample is not filled up to the subsampling size, it is always gonna just push the data in, to, in there. And that's gonna make it fill up with the first items just to keep uh, you know the proper size of the sample so he's always going to push it in there and then just skip the continuum right so those first thing is not particularly interesting and then what happens once it is filled up to the proper size um we will do um we will do a sampling with with the probability of one over the size of the data and I do the math random here because that's going to give you a number between 0 and 1 uh, as a decimal. So if that thing is smaller than this thing, then we're going to sample with that probability. And if this thing is true, meaning that we should sample, because not every iteration should sample, but if we if we should sample, then we're going to do a random number between 0 and the size of the data set, uh, or sorry, the sample. Um, so we're going to do a random number between 1 and the sample length minus 1, basically finding a random index in in the um, in uh, the sample and then we're going to swap out at that index with this data set and then I'm going to do a console log. So I think it's good to see this console log here and uh, it's going to be easy to see this kind of output here once you run it and you can see that in this data set the the size of the data is static basically the CSV file doesn't change so it's always going to swap with the same probability all the time. And if you paid attention to the outline of this tutorial, you're going to already be seeing some something interesting here where uh, we can do something different if, if it is not a static data set, basically meaning it's a stream. Then we're going to do something else, but that's, um, that's for later. And then you can also see what index I swapped it out for here. So it's a pretty, pretty straightforward algorithm. And uh, what it's going to do for you once it's run is it's going to sample all the data and output it into this sample uh, file over here. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and format this thing here so you can see the structure of the data. And uh, it's it looks like this. You have you have a object called sample. This is storing all the the, the samples basically. And then you had the config thing here, but you can see that now the the max values have been filled in here for the variables. We're going to need them later for uh, choosing a good value to split for. And if we look at the samples, we have all the we have all the items here for, uh, for from the data set that we sampled. And uh, they have the diagnosis code, and and uh, yeah, you know nothing has changed from from the other output. So that is how the sample data set looks like. And uh, that's it for for now. And um, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. And in the next video, we will talk uh, more about the isolation forest, I think, and see how we can use this sample in um, in accordance with that algorithm. So that's gonna be cool. So uh, see you guys in the next video.